told them not to. What was happening there is Adam and Eve were rebelling against God. Before Adam and Eve rebelled against God, there was no sin in the world. There was no cancer. There was no sickness. There was no death. There was no homosexuality. There was no abortion. There was no drugs. There was no alcoholism. There was none of these things until sin entered the world, friends. And all of us are living in that sinful world. We're all living in it, and we're all marked by it. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Now, can anybody here, other than Jesus Christ, tell me of one person that you know that doesn't, that's not going to die? There's your proof. Everybody's going to die. You need the proof. That, 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 what's that, sir? Hi. Um, you know in the Bible it says, Thou shalt not lay with a man, uh, that of a woman? Okay. What if it means missionary? So if I'm just being a guy doggy style, it's not a sin. We all watch your mouth. There's a lady standing here. It's not very polite to talk that way in front of a lady. But but well, do you have a serious okay. question? Do you have a serious question? Uh, that listen, was I, I, serious listen question. I love homosexuals. I love them. Because they're my neighbor. And it's not about what I think, sir. It's about what God says. I'm nobody. But what God says about it, but if I'm a Christian... But how are we supposed to believe a book that a human wrote? That a human wrote. The, the human didn't write. It was divinely... Listen, if I give you a pen, if I give you... What's your name, friend? My name's my Jason. Name? My name's Jason. My name is... Okay. Okay, if I give you a pen and ask you to write me a note, did you write the note? Did the pen write the note or did you write the note? I guess I wrote Exactly. And that's how God, that's how we came to the Scriptures. God inspired, the Holy Spirit inspired men to write. It was written under the unction. So back to your original question, I love homosexuals. I have a lot of homosexual friends, and they know where I stand on this. But it's because I love them, I tell them the truth. I tell them the truth. And this is what God says. Now, they're free to disagree, and they're free to get angry. But don't get angry at me. I'm, I, I don't write the mail. I disagree with them. Well, you can disagree with them, but the thing is, on what grounds do you disagree? I disagree because I do not believe that God wrote it. Okay, so, so what is your standard of truth, sir? My standard of truth... How do you know anything to be true or false? My standard of the truth is that there is an almighty God, but there are many angels who control everything else. There are many what? Angels who control everything Okay, where do you get that truth from? That's your truth. Where it's do you get that from? It's everywhere. But, well, where, where? Where where is your standard of truth? Romans, Greeks, there's... Uh, okay, so those are, those are, those are man-made things. No, hold on, because here is my point. Okay. What if the Romans and Greeks, which have same religions, just different names and different entities, mm, well, okay. what if they weren't necessarily wrong, but they weren't right either? Because there's an all-powerful God, yes, God. But what if he assigned angels to control, like, hey, you do the wind, you do the thunder, you do the... Why would he need to? He's God. He created the universe. The God of the Bible, well, the only even, one true God. Even God gets busy. So no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. See, that's the thing. You're trying to humanize God. You're trying to humanize your thoughts of God. And God's thoughts are God's ways are higher than our ways. Who can know the mind of God? Where were you when God created the universe? Where were you? I was nowhere. Exactly. God so created it. How do you know what it. you're preaching is Because I know that because God tells us in the scriptures it's true. But how do you know that's the true scripture? Because without it, you can't make sense of anything. Could it be? Could, let me ask you a question. Could it be? Could you be wrong about everything you know? You claim sure. to know. Sure. Then that's that's you see that's sensical. You just gave up knowledge. You just gave up knowledge. Ignorance is bliss. Are you, is that is that true? Yeah. But you just said you could be wrong about everything you know is true. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You're living in a world of of, of nonsensical uh, absurdity. Because I have a standard of truth by which to to prove things right or wrong. But you I'm don't. Do you believe in absolute truth? Okay. No. Okay. Is that true? What? Is that true? Oh, he's fine. He's fine. Is, is, is that true? That there's no absolute truth? You see that? That's a truth. You say there's no absolute truth. That is a truth that there's no... You see the absurdity. Even, even that's not even true. Is that true? No. There is no truth. There is no lie. Is, that, is it true that there's no truth? Is that true? I don't know. Is it? I'm asking you. You see what I mean? When you give up knowledge, when you give up knowledge... You have no standard by which to, to assess anything. You have no standard. What is your standard of truth? I know. There is no standard of truth. Is that true? Maybe. You, you see the inconsistency in your position. Yeah, I do, because I'm having fun. 
Well, okay, but, uh, but, but, uh, but I'm here because, Zach, I don't even know you, but I care about you as my neighbor. Because being faithful to the scriptures, the Bible tells me as a Christian to love my neighbor as myself. I'm not out here judging anybody. I'm not out here condemning anybody. Uh, the Bible says if you don't have a saving relationship with Christ, the Bible says you're condemned already. So I'm just simply a beggar telling other beggars where you can find the bread of life. And you are free to reject this message, but you're going to do so to your own peril. You're going to do so to your own demise, and I don't want that for you. I accept God, and I accept Jesus. Wait, 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 wait. God doesn't need your acceptance. You need His acceptance. He's God. He's Lord. He doesn't need Zach's acceptance. He doesn't need Jason's acceptance. Then why does He ask for it? He doesn't. There's he no, does. there is no, no, you, my he, friend. He sends Jesus. He sends Jesus. To die for us on the cross. To take the, yes, yes, sir. And. Do you know why He, he sent Jesus? For us to accept Him into His presence. That's but, nowhere in Scripture. But, actually, somewhere in it. There is nowhere in Scripture. If you can give me book, chapter, and verse, I'll be happy to, to, to discuss that with you. But I know it's not in Scripture. Where that comes from? That comes from bad teaching in the church. Oh, Zach, if you would just give your heart to Jesus, Jesus is just so lonely without you. That's what we hear in these churches. And that's not Jesus at all. He's sovereign. He's God. Wherever you heard that nonsense from, listen, I'm not degrading you. I'm just saying that's nonsense. That statement is nonsense, not you. So what I'm saying is he's king. He's king. We, we, we don't, we don't, he doesn't need our acceptance. We need his acceptance. Do you see that? How we get it backwards. And I had it backwards for many years. But what I'm saying is, Zach, I want to see you in heaven. I don't want to, I want to see you with the, the, because right now, Zach, uh, I'm just assuming from about what you're telling me, you're not a Christian. And if you're not, then there's the, the condemnation of God is hanging over your head right now. And maybe you, ma'am, I don't know you. But, but, but if you're not a Christian, that condemnation is hanging over your head. And that's why, as you said, God sent Jesus. Because listen, none of us can earn our way. That's why the Roman Catholic Church teaches works righteousness. Islam and all these others, they'll teach you works righteousness. The Bible says, I'll stay consistent, the Bible says that our best deeds are filthy rags before a holy and righteous king. In other words, it's like trying to bribe the judge. I gotta go to work. Well, we already missed the bus, and I'm coming for another bus. Okay, would you do me, would you do me, would you do me a favor? Would you just at least consider the, car, the gospel track that I gave you? Sure. I, okay, thank you.